we know that there are two types of research methodologies. One is quantitative and other is qualitative. If we choose to conduct qualitative research, then our data collection tools will differ. If we choose to have quantitative research methods, then our data collection tools also will differ. Today we will see some of the quantitative research data collection tools. One of that is checklist. Let us see things about checklist and how a researcher can use a checklist fruitfully and effectively. First let us see what is a checklist. Actually we all use checklist in our day to day use. When we go for shopping we prepare a list and after we complete we think that we have completed our shopping we just put a tick mark whether I have taken this whether I have taken that and then we realize oh I have already missed two items. Then I go back and I complete my purchase or my shopping. So this list every day everybody uses. We are thinking how a researcher can make use of checklist for collecting data which would help him or her in achieving the objectives or testing the hypothesis. Checklist is a list of items or tasks to be noted, checked or consulted. We check the items that means there are items and we say yes or no whether this item is here or it is not here. There is no in between either yes or no or we put a check that means it is in. We do not put a check that means it is not in. The beauty of the checklist is the person can literally check the items and a person knows whether all the items are in or they are not in. There is a very widely read book and this is audio book also written by a doctor the title itself is checklist. For any doctor or professional it is very important to list out the things which are which are supposed to be done before the operation, during the operation and post operation. So if we definitely know whether all these 20 things are done then only the operation should start then we have to be careful in preparing the list checklist and check that before we start the operation. This is for the doctor but any professional would do that and certainly a researcher has to prepare a checklist. That is for his or her own use but now we are saying checklist as a research tool. See these examples of checklist. Do you think they are familiar? Though they are research tools their structure looks familiar because we all use checklist. Now let us see characteristics of checklist. One thing is that it has to be precise. We have to use the words precisely so that the statements are small, understandable and the person can mark it. So precision, preciseness is one of the characteristic of checklist. Other characteristic is it should be practical, practical in terms of using it. It should be very simple, simple to understand simple to use and it has its practical use. So the observer should be able to use it the way he or she is expected to use. The third criterion is that the checklist should be economical. We should not be making checklist unnecessarily lengthy with 90 items when actually you need only 30 items. So we have to be very economical in making it precise. This also refers to the preciseness or precision of the tool. We have already said that here a person has to put a check. So this is one of the characteristic of a checklist that it provides an opportunity to the user to put a tick or a tick mark under yes or no. Checklist also helps you once you collect the data it also helps you to gather the data logically or psychologically. So you can have various sections in a checklist and use them. Let us take that example of understanding how the ICT is used in schools. Now you want to see how many computers are there, 
in this school, this cannot be found out with the checklist because it's a number. But if you are saying, are there computers, then yes or no. Is there internet, yes or no. There cannot be a third way sometimes. You have to say whether there is internet or there is no internet. Is there intranet, yes or no. So wherever there is a number involved, it is not a checklist. But if you want to put a tick mark, yes or no, then it becomes a checklist. Now let us see what is the purpose of using checklist. Naturally, it is used for data collection, but one of the purposes, important purposes of using a checklist, it, it gives you a very systematically collected data. It records the observations, whether, means you are observing whether there is a presence or there is no presence, that means there is an absence. So it is an observation which is recorded using the checklist. Similarly, again the same example, how many rooms are there in this school? This is not collected by checklist. But if you say, is the computer lab clean? You just observe, but for example, once you say clean, that means you have to identify the criteria. What do you mean by clean? But if you say, was there air conditioner? Yes or no. So logical arrangement or psychological arrangement of statements is its characteristic and naturally one of the purpose is, major purpose is to observe and record the presence or absence of it. In an observation schedule, we can use a checklist. For example, we are talking about attitude of a student towards something. While studying that attitude, we can have statements, does the student show this? Does the student come on time? Is he regular? Whatever. So if we make these statements where the answer is yes or no, that means you are observing its presence or absence. Certain statements related to attitude also can be tested, also can be recorded using checklist. But the moment you say to a great extent, to less extent, sometimes, always, this is not a part of checklist. Checklist has only two questions, yes or no. And one has to say is yes or no. Please see a difference between checklist and a rating scale. Rating scale has many alternatives because it gives an extent. Whereas checklist gives you exactly presence or absence. Not as a research tool, but checklist also can be used as a mnemonic device. Mnemonic device means for remembering. It is an aid for memory. So aid for memory, first of all, you write down everything and then, as I said earlier, you put a tick mark whether this thing is done or this thing is not done. I usually do that. I prepare a list of things to do every morning. And at the end of the day, I use that as a checklist. Out of 21 things which I had noted in the morning, which things I have done, which things I was not able to do, then my thinking process starts. What can be done to achieve those? But first I must know which are the things I have done and which are the things I was not able to do. Their checklist is very important. Checklist also can be used for evaluation purpose. When we do evaluation research, checklist can be used there and certainly it would give you huge data which needs to be analyzed further. And this data is in the form of knowledge about a particular thing, about a product, about a process, or about anything. So that's why checklist is a very important tool for any researcher, provided you prepare it pro properly and you use it judiciously. When the researcher prepares a tool, any tool, then he or she cannot immediately start using it. As we said earlier, every instrument has certain characteristic and you have to talk about those, we have to think about those. For example, reliability, for example, validity, its appropriateness, whether it is testing the content which you intend to test, all these things come up. Similarly, when you prepare a checklist, you have to evaluate that whether this would serve your purpose. If not, then you have to modify it. 
So let us see what are the criteria which we can use for evaluating any checklist. One is that applicability to full range of intended usage. We have certain usage in mind. So is this tool really would be useful in testing all those things which you want to test? Would it be applicable to all intended usages that we have to check? Second is clarity. We know that anybody can without much training people can use checklist. So unless there is a clarity of statements people would not be able to use it because it is not always that the researcher will only be using the checklist. There can be field investigators who may be using your checklist and for that clarity of language is very important. There should not be two different ways of interpreting what you want to say. So in very simple language clear language we must prepare the content. Third is comprehensiveness. We said that checklist can give you huge amount of data. It should be very comprehensive. Comprehensive in the sense it should not be only restricted to one or two parts. You are talking about huge data. You can organize that with sections, subsections and under each subsection if you have items for observation that would give us the comprehensive nature of a checklist. Other thing is about for all instrument correctness. The statements what you are observing should be correctly stated. There should not be any fault. If you are talking about some information referring to some year that should be correctly reflected. If you say whether this organization was established in 1947, we have to put a tick mark and for that they may have to see the primary data. But if you are talking about 1947 and it is not 1947, it is say 1956. So we are not really correct in stating, in making a statement related to checklist. As we said checklist is the most simple tool to use. So ease of use is its characteristic and naturally this is a criteria for evaluating this tool. So unless it is easy to use, you make it unnecessarily complicated, this is not going to be a good checklist. Criteria for evaluating a checklist whether it is good or bad is its fairness. We have said that we should not bring in the researchers bias in any of the tools. So it should be fair to everyone, whoever is answering, whoever is observing, you know, all the observers, it should be fair enough in preparation of the checklist. Parsimony or economical aspect is also very important. Economic in time, economic in use, economic in words, all these things reflect on the characteristic of a good checklist. If a statement can be made with 5 words, you should not make it unnecessarily 10 word statement. There is no need. As I said earlier, if it can be done in 30 items, you should not necessarily go for 45 items or 90 items. Think about economics of words, economics of time, economics of training, everything and that makes a checklist good. Pertinence to the content area is another criterion for evaluating a checklist. The researcher has first of all prepared a framework for his research, a theoretical framework for research. Now everything flows down with this theoretical framework. Now his or her objectives of research, the statement of hypothesis, the research design, everything refers to this framework. Now the content of the tool, any tool refers to this theoretical framework, refers to the objectives, refers to the research questions. So the content which is generated for preparing checklist need to be in full compliance with all these aspects. So we have to see whether the checklist is having the content which is pertinent to all these areas. That becomes one of the important criterion for checking whether your checklist is good or bad. Let us see advantages of checklist. We have already seen its characteristics, is a purpose and naturally keeping that purpose in mind we know that one of the highest level of 
advantage of checklist is that it gives you huge amount of data collected through checklist. Another important advantage is that because it is simple to understand, you do not require to give high level of training. Questionnaire or interview schedule or observation schedule, they are very complicated and there may be different interpretation. There are many tools within these tools. So, naturally the kind of training which is given to research investigators, field investigators in using those tools is more time consuming, it is more in depth. But here checklist is very simple, statements are very clear, they are very precise and you only have to say its presence or its absence. So, naturally there is no need for giving high level training. So, it saves your time of training. Even though you do not need to give high level training, the performance can be of high level. Because your questions are so that it gives you huge amount of data and naturally the researcher is very happy in collecting this data it improves your task performance by using checklist. One more advantage because of its characteristic that it is simple to understand, inter observer reliability is quite high. What does that mean? That if the checklist is used by one or more observers, they would give you near to similar results because the statements are clear, they are very precise and very simple to understand and they only have to say the presence or absence, yes or no. So, inter observer reliability is quite high. The data is collected in minimum steps. Other tools are very complicated, very comprehensive. They require elaborate administering process. Here in checklist, one can directly go observe and make a statement, say yes or no. And that is why it reduces various steps in the process of data collection. Checklists are a tool which are very simple to understand, there is no need for training, we have seen lot of advantages, but does it mean that it is a panacea? Does it mean that the, it should be a preferred tool for data collection? I do not think so, because there are variety of tools available before using, before, before selecting checklist as a tool, the researcher also must know what are its shortcomings, what are its disadvantages. Let us see some of the shortcomings and then decide whether to use a checklist or not. One of the disadvantage of checklist is it is very specific to a situation. A checklist prepared for one school for certain statements may not be appropriate for another school. Another disadvantage is that it is very restrictive in nature. Restrictive in the sense you have to only see its absence or presence. Sometimes it happens that it is you cannot have a response only yes or no. There are in between either they do not know or there is in between something but checklist does not provide for the third alternative, fourth alternative. There are only two alternatives, presence or absence. So, in a way it is very restrictive. It is closed in nature, very structured and it is restrictive. Now, the researcher is only interested in yes or no, presence or absence, but if you are interested in a quality of it, you have computers. Do you have internet? Yes. So, you have put a tick mark, but how many hours the internet is there? Is it of a good quality? You have bought say 8 Mbps, does it really give you 8 Mbps all the time or sometimes it is only 500 Kbps? All these questions cannot be answered by checklist. Checklist will only tell you internet is present. So, you have to see that the kind of data which you need is checklist appropriate tool for such kind of a data, then only you use checklist. It also does not give you a duration of a behavior, observation for how much time, for how many months, for how many days, these questions cannot be answered by checklist. 
checklist will only say whether it was used or not used. It is for an inner day you are using certain things only for one hour and not for all seven hours, but still it will show its presence because it was used and the researcher may get a wrong impression about that particular aspect or a variable. Keeping these disadvantages or shortcomings of a checklist, we still feel that in certain situations checklist is an appropriate tool for collecting data. Keep that in mind and let us see how to use a checklist. First of all, one has to prepare a checklist keeping in mind the content, the objectives, the hypothesis, what you want to test, which events you want to record. There should be some consensus on it. Make a list of all those which you want to observe. Select the one which are most appropriate because we have already said we don't want to make a checklist very lengthy. So the things, the events, the observations which you want to make, have a consensus on it and then make a list. Then once you prepare this list, determine the time or period for using that. Which period you want to check? Suppose you want to check, use a checklist in a school. When do you want to use it? Is it in the beginning of the year or middle of the year or at the end of the year? So that has to be determined or any time possible to use, you go for it. But generally the observations are very specific to a particular period. So that period also has to be decided. Now you have statements with you, you have a time frame, you have a period when you want to go and observe. Now keeping these things in mind, you prepare a checklist. Now once this checklist is ready, try it out for its appropriateness, for its reliability and also validity. Make sure that the form of this checklist is easy to understand and there are no two interpretations of the statements which you have used. Then once this checklist is ready, start collecting data. Once you collect the data, you analyze the data. These last two stages are common for all instruments. Keeping all these things in mind, I am sure you will be able to design a checklist which is appropriate, useful, reliable and valid. Thank you.